Hi there, welcome to this channel. In this video, we are going to understand Poisson's ratio with specific focus to oxetic materials. Now, the concept of the concept of Poisson's ratio was developed by a French uh, physicist and mathematician uh, uh, and engineer uh, Simon Denis Poisson in 1811. 200 years down the line, we still find the concept useful in studying the mechanics of uh, our materials. Now, if we have a material deforming as shown, Notice the major uh, long the major axis of elongation, the x. Of course, the other uh, directions are minor. So in this case, in this particular animation, we assume the major axis of deformation is the axis x axis, and the other two directions are minor. So when a material deforms in a major axis, there is bound to be lateral shortening in the other uh, uh, direction, two directions. So assuming the original length in the x direction is Lx, the original length in the y direction is Ly, the original direction in the z direction is Lz, and then they deform uh, by the amount shown and we divide these deformations by two because we are in the diagram we've only shown one direction while in actuality the uh, deformation happen in two directions so you can see the x and here and there and of course the animation i think is clear of the other directions so poison's ratio actually is the by definition uh, uh, the negative of the lateral strain divided by the longitudinal strain. So that's it. So that's what we know as uh, uh, the Poisson's ratio. This is what the uh, French mathematician discovered. So the ratio of the two strains uh, with a negative attached by definition that becomes the Poisson's ratio. So just so you see what is happening, so the axial uh, uh, elongation, notice the shortening in the other minor directions, once more, elongation, and notice the shortening uh, in the other direction. I think the, uh, for th that sufficiently demonstrates the point in that regard. So, we can then proceed to write the following equation. Now, the Poisson's ratio is the negative epsilon y divided by epsilon x, neg or negative epsilon z divided by epsilon x. Note that we consider, in this case, we assume the major direction of deformation is x. However, you can assume, if your major direction of deformation is y or z, you can assume, but please make sure the sign convention and the, uh, the concept is consistent with the direction of the axis assumed. So for isotropic materials, then epsilon y and epsilon x are the same. So if we add the, the, the first, if you, because uh, it has been demonstrated that the deformation in one direction affects the deformation in the other direction. So if we have, because in real life actually we have complicated stress uh, position, I mean stress uh, uh, conditions where the, actually the, three, the three D direction all have stresses. So that means stresses in one direction affects the stresses in the other direction. And so are the strain. So therefore, 
if you want to find effective strain in the x direction you have to consider the other two direction and we already know establish this relationship we already established this kind of relationship for the 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 relationship between the strain in the in the major x direction and the strain in the minor y or z direction so this is the equation so if you want to find if we find and if we add Hooke's law then Hooke's law is basically uh, uh, this is the result and you can uh, uh, because we know that the strain is basically the stress divided by the the uh, Young's modulus from Hooke's law and so is the same situation here in this case we know the relationship between the the strain in the x direction and the strain in the y direction in the poison ratio and so you can write an equation uh, I think it's not difficult to see how we get this equation uh, and with the explanations already offered as shown in the equations and so if we assume uh, what is called plain strain condition plain strain condition means that the the two lateral directions are of finite length we, we can measure i mean finite dimensions the length and the width in the in the minor direction or the lateral directions can be measured but the longitudinal direction is too long that's why i've just shown a humongous length here let's assume the length is too long and because we know the strain is the change in length divided by the original length and because this length is too much then you can see why the change in uh, length over uh, the original length and because the original length is too long then in plain strain condition we say this is why we say that this strain is approaching zero approximately zero and if we assume an, a hydrostatic case, hydrostatic uh, means this, the stresses in the three directions are equal. And I demonstrate uh, um, with this um, previous equation here. So sigma x equals sigma y equals sigma z. That is the hydrostatic equation. And what does that mean? Uh, if you remember from Pascal's principle, if you immerse any any material inside a fluid or object inside a fluid, the pressure is equal in both directions. So that's what we are saying. So hydrostatic situation. So that's how we come uh, up with this kind of simplification. So two things for plain strain condition, that means the length is too long the strain in that direction is approximately zero and hydrostatic condition where the three state states are the same the sigma z sigma y and sigma x as equals sigma then we can simplify the equation as shown and uh, from previously then you can see i think it's not difficult to see how the uh, solution for the Poison's ratio is 0 0.5. Uh, I think this is just uh, algebraic manipulation which can be easily done. And I think the by intuition or the process through which we derive this is quite telling. Remember we use the word hydrostatic. Hydrostatic we talked about Pascal when Pascal's principle where you, when you immerse an object in a fluid, then the stress state, the st the pressure is equal all around. We are talking about water, right? Something water or fluid. So that's it. So for water, the Poisson's ratio is 0 0.5. So as another example is maybe rubber. Rubber. These are incompressible. So for incompressible materials. And the poison's ratio is 0 0.5. In fact, that is the upper limit. And we have um, quite interesting. So if we have a material that deforms 
Notice the animation with no substantial change in the lateral directions. So then that material has Poisson's ratio of zero. So for example, cork. For the wine lovers, uh, we find this interesting. The reason why the cork is able to seal the the wine well is because even if you use a cork whose uh, diameter is a little bit larger than the diameter of the bottle, there is no substantial reduction in the in the in the lateral direction. So that's why it's able to squeeze the cork inside uh, the top of the bottle and is able to seal it quite well uh, and protect your wine. So that's because there is no lateral deformation as shown by the uh, the animation and that kind of material like cork has poisons ratio of zero and on the higher side we've already said this the like rubber or water the poisons ratio is uh, is uh, is uh, 0 0.5 so for most natural materials or materials derived from natural things, the presence ratio will generally range from 0 to 0 0.5. So for example, um, we talk about glass has, has a presence ratio of 0.18. Concrete has a round presence ratio of there about maybe 0 0.2. Then metals, most metals have presence ratio between 0.2 and 0.3. Now, uh, when things get to contain more water or get saturated, the poisons ratio approaches 0 0.5 uh, with water, pure water uh, on the limit. But if, for example, we're talking about saturated soil, then the poisons ratio could be maybe between 0.45 to 0.5. But the point is, when things become saturated, that means the approach in compressibility then the poisons ratio get closer and closer to 0 0.5 Now, there are only materials that do not obey the the uh, the observations already um, mentioned. So at this point, it is important to say that generally most materials in existence have poisons ratio ranging from negative one to zero point five. Uh, most natural materials have poisons ratio between zero and zero point five, as already introduced. However, there are other uh, materials that have poisons ratio of negative and this comes I think from the formula already established it's not difficult to see to see uh, uh, why because this material uh, 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 being animated or shown there increases proportionately when you increase the length then the length in the both transverse the, the transverse or the minor axis also increase if you reduce then the the length in the other directions reduce proportionately so these are engineered materials of uh, the engineered for certain uh, uh, specific purposes or to behave exactly like that so these materials have negative poisons ratio and i think it's not difficult to see uh, if you allow me to to go back to what we have uh, talked about before so by definition by definition uh, by definition then the negative of the lateral strain and remember this these materials are, are, are shortening uh, this uh, this material uh, in this case these materials are shortening 
so if it is shortening so if you put the negative if it's shortening it will be a negative so negative of a negative then we come up with a positive with a positive uh, poisons ratio all right so because they are shortening they are becoming shorter the extension here uh, in the the extension assuming extension or uh, is positive and shortening is negative so because the other directions are shortening if you plug that in this uh, formula it will get a positive poisons ratio so for for normal cases where there is axial shortening in the other directions the poisons ratio is always positive by definition and for our case uh, for this case for this specific case for this specific case the for this specific case you can see by definition so there is extension so if we take that the, the, the extension as positive you plug in a, a, a formula which is negative by definition then you get a negative poisons ratio so that's the point i think is sufficiently demonstrated already and just leaving you with one question uh, what do you think are the possible uses think about it uh, and maybe I'd like you to comment uh, down on the on the on the on the comment section if you what you might think are the possible uses of these uh, auxetic materials. And uh, for the uh, also another question which we can tackle in the next video if you find this interesting. And um, why do why do compress incompressible materials? A poisons ratio of 0 0.5 this will be a subject of uh, another video otherwise i thank you guys i hope this you find this educative or you learn something about it and if you like my videos please uh, uh, subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell so that you can get many of and more of these videos I want to thank everyone who has taken the opportunity to like and watch my videos. Uh, I thank you for the support, and uh, and um, 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 I look forward to seeing you for my next video. If you like to give me feedback, please uh, comment on what you like me to do in my next videos and. And uh, also you can write me an email uh, giving me suggestions. I hope you find this uh, useful and you learn something from it. Thank you very much. Goodbye and I see you for my next video.